everyone. Happy New Year to all of you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So nice to see many of you from different countries and different time zones. Before we start, we would thank Universe for giving us this great opportunity with the Gayatri Mantra, chanted by Professor Regina from Brazil. Namaskarams. Om Buat Swaha Tat Savitur Varenyan Bargo Devasya Jimahi Jiyo Yona Prachodaya. Many blessings to the universe. Thank you. Welcome to Ka Homeopathy Study Group Pro Bono Webinar hosted by Kavita Holistic Approach. I would like to take privilege to say that our CAR study group is very unique, homeopathy pro bono study group from the United States of America, which formed to unite world renowned practitioners throughout the globe. CAR's mission and vision are very unique to inspire young homeopaths via webinars, which provide professional continuing educational homeopathic credits for practitioners. We follow the principles of classical homeopathy and invite speakers for HNA accredited webinars. We value and treasure the human collective as our honorable base. We provide merit certificates for spreading the light of homeopathy worldwide while celebrating stage four cancer survivors through our inspirational book talks. These webinars are for educational purposes only and see expert homeopath for treatment. This is Kavita Kupunur, board certified homeopath from Michigan, USA, president and CEO of Kavita Holistic Approach, founder and director of Ka Homeopathy Study Group. I am outreach coordinator of CHC PR committee, encouraging homeopaths to become CHC certified, as well as HNA CPD provider, encouraging homeopaths for HNA accredited CU webinars. I am member of Kevin Friendly Foundation a non-profit organization that helps to serve poor people in greater needs in India. I thank Enterka Homeopathy Study Group team for the continuous support. This webinar is moderated by Ka family, Dr. Sweta Singh, our Ka chief administrator and Professor Regina Rianelli. It is being recorded as we speak and we are live on Facebook. We have Jot form posted in chat to get CU. Please fill the form to receive the certificate. And if you are watching on live on webinar on Facebook, email us castedigroup at gmail.com. Today's topic is about curability of tumors with calcare iodata and introduction to HNA. In our past webinars, we have covered cancer management in stage three and four by Dr. Farooq Master and Dr. Heralal Agarwal. Today, we will learn more about remedy calcare iodata, how it can be helpful in treating tumors. It is great privilege to introduce our honorable speakers for today's webinar, Dr. Saptashya Banerjee and Anna Vakil. Dr. Saptashya Banerjee, gold medalist, is a renowned homeopath and experienced homeopath. He did MD in homeopathy with first position in All India MD entrance exam. He is the fifth generation of a distinguished and widely respected homeopathic family. He works as assistant director at Bengal Allen Medical Institute, visiting consultant at Arvan Holistic Institute, Thailand, visiting lecturer at Allen College of Homeopathy, England. He acts as a consultant in various rural and slum clinics, often seeing over 50 patients a day. Dr. Saptashi inherits his clinical acumen and wisdom from his renowned father, Dr. Suprata K. Banerjee. Dr. Saptashi is a popular lecturer and his dedication to the truth of homeopathy is regarded as inspiring. His enthusiasm for the old school of classical homeopathy and its practical implementation is unbounded. He is assistant director of Bengal Island Medical Institute. You can reach him at doctor, doctor.dr.saptashi.gmail.com. We will also put it in the chat, Dr. Saptashi agrees, and also at website 
www.homeopathy-course.com. And at the end of the webinar, we welcome a very special <coughs> HNA president, Anna Vakil. As we have been doing several HNA accredited webinars through Ka Homeopathy Study Group team. And many of you have uh, shown interest to learn more about HNA. So stay tuned until the end of the webinar. And thank you so much for your precious time and undivided attention. Let us welcome our first honorable speaker, Dr. Saptarshi Banerjee, to our webinar. Thank you very much uh, for the kind introduction. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, those who are joining in. Um, I have a very interesting topic to share with you over the next hour. And <clears throat> that is curability of uh, tumors with calciod, calcidia iodata. Now, very many times you may wonder or you may think calcidia group in general or calcidia carb is a very commonly prescribed remedy. But very often we tend to ignore the satellite remedies of a polycress. Calcarea group, Kelly group, Natrium group are our celebrated polycress groups. But sometimes we fail to acknowledge the importance of these lesser known brothers and sisters of the big polycress family. And my friends, Calcarea iodata is one of those celebrated polycrest satellite remedies, which we should incorporate in our practice. As you heard that I am the fifth generation homeopath, so I've inherited the understanding and the ancestral tips over the five generations. And calcarea iodata is a remedy which has been practiced and used extensively in our family. And therefore, over the next hour, I would like to share with you the utility of this beautiful remedy. And if you've seen me on YouTube or if you heard me earlier, I'm sure you understand that what I try and promote is simple classical homeopathy. I'm not here to share with you any new methods or systems, but I'm to come here to share with you old school Hanumanian classical homeopathy. And I always share this with any seminar or webinar I have taught that what I can do, you can do. So those of you who are practicing, you're seeing patients day in, day out. I'm sure when you hear me today, tonight, you'll go back and be able to implement Calcarea Iodata in your practice. So starting off with Calcaiod, you understand it's a combination of two great remedies. It's a combination of Calcarea group and it's a combination of Iota. Now, whenever you think of the remedy calcarea iodata, you have to understand miasmatically that there's a lot of psychotic and tubercular component. Why tubercular component? Because whenever you think of calcarea or when you think of iodum, there is a lot of glands affected. So tubercular psychotic or psychotubercular, and that's the, unfortunately, the miasmatic preponderance in the modern day world. If you think of today's world, we are all wanting excess more and more and more and more. So there's always greed for more. There is expectation for more. We are always trying to get more out of the world. It's real gains, that's psychotic, excess, greed. And whenever we are getting it, whenever you are achieving it, whenever we are conquering it, we tend to think, what else? What else can be achieved? What else can be get got? So we're dissatisfied. So one, on one hand, you have the greed of psychosis. And on the other hand, you have the tubercular dissatisfaction. And that's a preponderant miasm, believe me or not, in today's modern day world. I'm sure many of you will agree with me that people are greedy for more on one hand. At the same time, when they are getting it, they feel dissatisfied. What's more to achieve? And this tubercular psychotic component is very well implemented in the miasmatics of calcarea iodata. Calcarea has a strong tubercular history and with its affinity for the glands, the diathesis, which we call as a scrofulous diathesis, calcarea iod can be prescribed with very good results. That's why if you see, I've mentioned here the key words, 
there's a discontentment, the impatience of the tubercular. At the same time, there's the excess need for more exploitation, materialism, which is psychosis. And that combination works so much in favor for Calchiod. And I'm, I'm sure those of you who are joining in tonight have prescribed and do prescribe calcarea very often in your practice. But very often you'll find cases where you're stuck with calcarea, probably you're not getting improvement with calcarea. You retake the case again, you find that there's still symptoms of calcarea. Try and go back and see if you find calcarea iodata in those cases. My friends, the best understanding of calcaiod is calcadia symptoms in an iodum constitution or iodum symptoms in a calcadia constitution. But most often than not, calcadia iodata is a very hot patient. You understand calcard is very chilly, but with calcaiod, iodum is the hottest patient in the Metromedica. So you'll find very hot calcadia, and that's calcaiod. There's strong craving for fresh open air. Calcadia loves fresh open air. There's longing for fresh open air in calcarea, which inspires them, which benefits them. At the same time, iodum is a hot patient who has strong craving for fresh air. So that combination of calcarea, that combination of iodum is strongly represented in calcarea iodata as well. So think of those cases of calcarea where you have prescribed calc, but it's not working. Think of a hot calcarea. Think of a hot calcarea with strong, strong, strong craving for fresh open air. And that's where Calcadia iod comes into the picture. Have a look at this, my friends. You see, it's a very practical session which I'm going to share with you. And as I shared with you, what I can do, you can do. Prescribe on what you see. And here you see calcadia symptoms in a hot iodum constitution. I mentioned that already. Affection of glands. And that's the criteria of calcadia iodata. If you see, if you think of today's modern day world, homeopaths are being consulted for what? Mostly glandular disorders. If you start from head to foot, you'll find glands that are affected. And calcarea iodata is a very useful remedy for that. Calcarea is a scrofulous remedy. Calcarea group in general, calcarea carb. But whenever you combine that with iodum, it becomes an even better prescription whenever you're prescribing for glandular disorders. <coughs> List makers, this is important for calcaiod. What do you mean by list makers? If you think of iodum, iodum is always checking and checking and checking. So they make this list. So tomorrow's work, one, two, three, four, five, put it up on the fridge. So they're always making the list so that I know what I'm going to do today, today, today. So they're always the list makers. That's the iodum component. And to a certain extent, that also comes from the insecurity of calcarea because what if I am not being able to fulfill what I have to do? So they always make a list of today's major actions or major works which I'm going to do. And that iodum component will be found in calcaiod. Catches cold easily, that's a very, very important factor for calcaiod. If you think calcarea, easily catching cold, affecting the glands, affecting the tonsils. Similarly in iodum, they catch cold easily as well. So both the components come together for calcaiod. <coughs> irregular periods from hormonal irregularity. If you think of Calcarea, an obese calcarea, or an emaciated calcaiod, both can suffer from irregular periods. Why? Because again, maybe the ovaries are affected, hormone, glands are affected. Maybe the thyroid is affected, glands are affected, and that is resulting in the irregular periods. So irregular periods from the hormonal imbalance. And that in coordination is psychosis. If you think psychosis, the key, one of the key words for psychosis is in coordination. So the hormonal incoordination is the etiology on one hand. What is the manifesting feature? You're having irregular periods, irregular menses. And that you'll find with calcaiod as well. Darting ovarian pains. Sometimes in calcaiod, this is because of the iodum component as well, that you have a lot of darting pains in calcaiod with leucoreal discharge. There's a lot of leucoreal discharge of iodum. And along with that, you have a lot of darting pains in calcaiod. So those are a few of the interesting features which you'll find with calcarea iodata. Physical makeup, if you think, there are two ends of the spectrum for calcaiod. On one hand, obviously, you can find the fair fatty flabby calcarea. On the other hand, you can find a very emaciated cachectic iodum. So you can find either end of the spectrum 
in calc iod together. So very fair fatty flabby calc, or it's a very emaciated iodum when both components are absolutely useful for calc iod. But most often than not, as I shared with you, there are hot patients, strong, strong, strong craving for fresh open air because that's a calcarea component, that's the iodum component. And also you have to understand that's the tubercular component of both the remedies. They crave for things which makes them sick. I crave fresh open air, but whenever I go into the fresh open air, I'm getting a cold. So calc iod, whenever they're going into the fresh open air, they will get a cold. And that's very, very classical for calc iod as well. Hot patient, as I mentioned to you. So whenever you come across a hot calcarea, whenever you come across a calcarea with a lot of glandular symptoms, and whenever you come across a calcarea with strong, strong craving for fresh open air, calc iod works marvelously well. Myism, as I shared with you, psychosis, tubercular as well, as I shared with you because of the glandular component, you'll find that with calc iod. Emotional symptoms, as I shared with you earlier, they can be the fears of calc. So the fear of darkness, fear of ghosts. I learned this from my granddad. Farrington mentions this in his clinical Metromedica, that whenever somebody comes and tells you that I have all the fears under the sun, in name of fear, I have it, it's definitely calcarea. So fear of darkness, fear of heights, fear of thunderstorm, all the fears, you name it, I have it, that's definitely calcarea group. So you have the fearfulness of calcarea. <coughs> they can be melancholic and sad as well. But I shared with you, they can have the list making capabilities of iodine, sometimes stemming up due to the insecurities which you find with calcarea. If you see, I've mentioned here, list makers constantly makes list. They're suspicious of forgetting things. Two things you have to understand here, the iodum component is of the list makers, but at the same time you'll have in calcarea, they have on one hand the insecurity, also at the same time, they're very slow and sluggish. So those two factors also contribute to making them list makers so that they do not forget the course of the day. Because also you have to understand calcarea is very responsible. They may be slow and sluggish, but they're responsible and dutiful. So even if they are slow, but they will try to finish whatever jobs they have been entrusted with. So that list maker sometimes goes hand in hand with the insecurities, with the slowness and the dutifulness of calcarea. So that you'll find three A's for calcarea, three A's for calc iod, anxiety, alertness, apprehension. So always on the edge, what's going to happen. And that's the soric features. You understand calcarea is Hanuman's trio of antisoric. Sulfur is the king, calcarea is the queen, and lycopodium is the prince. So in calcarea cub, you'll find the three A's of soda, anxiety, alertness, apprehension. <coughs> And that is a very important feature of calc iod as well. My friends, before I move further, I've asked this very many times in previous seminars as well, that calcarea has these symptoms, iodum has these symptoms, how can you combine and prescribe on the basis of those? You know, sometimes you have to understand that these are the group symptoms, group symptoms of the remedies. And very many times when you combine these group symptoms, they work really well in tandem whenever you're prescribing the calcarea iod as a remedy. My reference for this is if you read Kent's Metromedica, very many chapters he has mentioned, natrum salt, ferrum phos, where he has mentioned you have the hemorrhage of ferrum, you have the congestion of phosphorus, and in both their combination, it makes ferrum phos a hemorrhagic remedy. So do not be skeptical, do not be uncertain that calcarea has these symptoms, iodum has these symptoms, how can I prescribe calcarea iod? Master prescriber like Kent has mentioned, they can prescribe on the basis of the combined symptoms and it works marvelously. And believe me, I've learned this over the four generations and it works really, really well in clinical practice. So don't be skeptical, go out of your comfort zone, wherever you have prescribed calcarea carb or calcarea force, try and prescribe a calcarea iodata. The Metromedica part is very limited in Borike's Metromedica for calcarea iod. I've tried and come made a combination of symptoms which can be used with clinical practice. So I'm sure this will help you in the long run as well. So that's about the emotional symptoms. Do keep in mind the list makers of iodum, they're always on the making the list so that they're not forgetting. But very many times that is creeping up due to the insecurity, that is creeping up due to the slowness, but 
the dutifulness of calcarea. We come to the characteristics of calcaiod. <coughs> My friends, do always remember head to foot, whichever glands you can think of, calcarea iod has got a definite, definite ability to help with you those. You think of from head to foot, affinity for the adenoids, affinity for the tonsils, for the parotid glands, go down breast tumors, breast lumps, go down prostatic enlargement, polycystic ovary, testicular tumors. So all kinds of glandular disorders, uterine fibroids, which you can think of. And A, you have prescribed calcarea carb, you're not getting good results, but you're still sure that it's a calcarea totality. What you're coming across? You're coming across a hot calcarea. What you're coming across? You're coming across a list making calcarea. You're coming across a hot calcarea with strong craving for fresh air. And you're coming across a calcarea where the glandular enlargement is one of the predominating themes of the case. Darting pains, as I shared with you, think of a case of a polycystic ovary of a uterine fibroid, where there's sharp shooting pains in the lower abdomen, in the pelvic region. Along with that, there is a leucorial discharge that is making the patient emaciated, cachectic, and that you can help with calcaiod. Secretions are profuse and yellow. That's a psychotic component. I'm sure you understand this thick yellow discharge, a psychotic discharge. Calcariod has that. There are many, very many references where calcarea iod has prescribed, been prescribed for tumors and growths with very good results. Clark's Dictionary gives a few cases where there has been improvement, as I mentioned in the slide here, nodular tumors, where calcarea iod has helped with very good results. Calc, calc features, I'm sure you understand this, but I'll just quickly share with you that head sweats, sour smelling discharge, yellow nasal discharge as well. That's a psychotic component which can be found with calc <coughs> iod as well. Catch cold easily. That's a feature of calcarea. That's a feature of iodum as well. When you combine that, and I always ask this to the patient, what happens when you get a cold? Because you understand every patient has a susceptibility. Somebody will tell you that I get a headache. Somebody will tell you I get a throat pain. Somebody will tell you I get a ear pain. Whenever you come across a calcarea iod, it will always tell you that whenever I get a cold, it always invariably affects my glands. Either I get my tonsils to be enlarged, throat pain, either I feel my adenoids are enlarged, either I feel my parotids are paining or enlarged, or maybe a, even a breast pain as well. So always it affects the glands. That's the weakest link for calcarea because you understand Calcadia and iodine both have that component. Cannot bear tight clothing around the abdomen. Very many remedies have that. Calc iod has that as well. With Lachesis, Bovista, those remedies, sulfur as well, cover that for the tight clothing, unbearable, especially around the abdomen. Head sweats, I already shared that with you. Sour smelling, <coughs> constipated. Again, sour smelling discharges. Profuse menstruals with clots. Now that's also the tubercular component of calc iod. Whenever you come across a tubercular remedy, you'll find there's a lot of hemorrhage, excess bleeding in a tubercular remedy. Phosphorus has it, syncona has it, lachesis has it, that's a tubercular component. Similarly, because of the tubercular component in calcaion, think of a woman with uterine fibroid, she's bleeding profusely, heavy bleeding. Think of a polycystic ovary, she's having irregular and heavy periods. So that heavy bleeding is one of the factors of the tubercular component of calcaion. Fearful temperament, I already shared that with you. Three A's, anxiety, alertness, apprehension. That's one of the features of calcaiod. Again, I learned this from my granddad. Whenever you come across a patient who has equal desire for sweet, sour, and salt, always think of calcaiod. Or always think of calcarea group. I repeat that, equal desire for sweet, sour, and salt. Egg, I'm sure you know this. Cold food is interesting, and I like to share this clinical tip with you. <coughs> Whenever you come across cases, where the patient tells you that food which is served warm, I want it cold. So I can take, take out a lasagna from the fridge and have it without warming it up. I can take out a pizza from the fridge and have it without warming it up. I can take out an Indian curry from the fridge and have it without warming it up. 
So food which is served warm, but I want it cold. And that's a very important factor for calcarea group in general. So cold food doesn't always mean ice cream and cold drinks, but food which is served warm or room temperature, but you want it cold. My friends, I want you to note this, please. Four, five remedies have that. Phosphorus, calcarea group, silica, thuya, pulsatilla. These are your five top remedies. Again, I've learned this as a clinical tip for desire for cold food. I repeat, food which is served warm, they want it cold. Phosphorus, thuya, silica, calcarea group, and pulsatilla. <coughs> Ice cream desire can be a feature of calc as well. So... That's one of the features. These are the iodum features, my friends. Again, you see this corroborates with calcarea, what I shared with you. Glandular swelling and scrofulous diathesis. What do you mean by scrofulous diathesis? Glands are affected. They catch cold very easily. Either you can get a tickling cup, which is iodum feature, but Mostly you'll get glands to be affected as I shared with you earlier on. Palpitation from least exertion. Again, this is a tubercular feature which you'll find with iodine. Least movement, they get palpitation. They're out of breath. They are exerting themselves and they are having palpitation. A lot of weakness during menses. They're exhausted during menses like synchona, like hamamelis. This kind of exhaustion during periods due to the profuse loss of fluids. As I shared with you, they can have profuse periods, profuse menses due to the tubercular hemorrhage, but also you have to understand and acknowledge that because of the excessive bleeding that is draining them out, they have excess weakness during the periods. Irregular periods, as I shared with you, hot patient, very, very important for calciod. As you know, cal iodum is a hottest patient in the Metromedica and hence calcadia iod is a very, very hot patient. <coughs> so you see many of the features are corroborating with the calcarea. You have the scrofulous nature in calcarea as well. That's also a feature of iodine. Catching cold easily you have in calcarea, also a feature of iodine. Irregular periods you have in calcarea, also corroborated with iodine. And most importantly, iodine is a very, very hot patient, which feature you'll find generally with calciod. I'll do a quick head to foot summary of calciod. Calcadia can have a hot feeling in the head. So that whenever you touch the head, calcadia feels hot. Calcadia, lachesis, sulfur, graphitis, medrinum, all can have this kind of hot vertex. And that hot feeling you can have with calcadia. Along with the hot feeling, there's profuse head sweats in calc as well. Headache from cold exposures. Calcadia can have a cold exposure which is causing a headache. That's the com complementary relationship between belladonna and calcarea. Belladonna results a headache from cold exposure. Calcarea also has a headache from cold exposure. Yellow nasal discharge, as I shared with you, but we do not prescribe calcarea in acute. It's more a chronic prescription. So yellow psychotic discharges, grand medicine for nasal polyps. My friend, I'm sure world over you'll find cases of nasal polyps where you have prescribed a calcarb or a calcarea force, you're finding not Suitable change. Now try calciod in those cases. If you find a hot calcarea, nasal polyps, you understand glandular involvement is there. Thick yellow discharge from the nose. He's an emaciated calcarea. Calciod will definitely come to your service. So do, do, do. Please try it for nasal polyps. <clears throat> I want you to remember this picture. This is a very, very classical, classical description of calciod. We call this as honeycombed appearance in the tonsils, crypts in the tonsils. And it's almost like the tonsils are kissing each other. So you can call this as a kissing tonsillitis as well. Calcadia iod, you know, I run a slum clinic in <coughs> Calcutta where it's about 50 patients I have to see around in three, three and a half hours. Time constraint is there and there's quite a lot of patient load. And believe me, I do not have the time to open my repertory and repertorize a case. And very many cases, it's a look and diagnose prescription. And calcadia iod is a medicine which can be prescribed based on the look and diagnose of the tonsil crypts. And as I shared with you, my granddad always used to say, prescribe on what you see. And 
I'm sure you'll come across cases of children with tonsillitis where you're finding crypts, lacunae in the tonsils, which is known as a honeycombed appearance in the tonsils. It's a diagnostic of calcarea iodata. data. Kissing tonsils. Very many times if calcarea iod doesn't work in these cases, I want you to try another remedy as well. Alenthus, A-I-L-A-N-T-H-U-S, Alenthus glandulosa. Alenthus is also a remedy for huge enlargement of the tonsils, which is also known as kissing tonsillitis. And Alenthus works in those situations as well. So calcarea iodata doesn't work. You can always think of Alenthus glandulosa for this kind of kissing tonsillitis, where they're so much in love that they cannot be separated, you know? So... They're always together. <coughs> Coming down, as I said, with again, glandular en enlargements, nodules in thyroid. So you think of thyroid nodules, if you think of goiters, again, calcarea iodata is useful. Lymph node enlargements. So if you think of cervical lymphadenopathy, if you think of lymphomas, calcarea iodata is also a fantastic remedy to be prescribed in those conditions. Cervical lymph node enlargement. And especially the patient is telling you that I'm in a cold, I get exposed to a cold raft of air. I'm I'm in a cold room. The lymph nodes start paining. They become tender and their calcarea iodata also helps you in those conditions. So lymphomas, lymphadenopathies, calcarea will always come to your rescue. Dry tickling cough, as I shared with the iodine feature, which you can get like a night cough, which you find with Drosera as well. Calcaiod can have that, but you do not prescribe calcaiod in an acute case. It's always a chronic prescription. Catching cold easily, as I shared with you, whenever they catch a cold, either three things. Number one, you can get a headache with calcaiod. Number two, you can get a dry tickling cough with calcaiod. Number three, you can get the tonsils and glandular enlargement with calcaiod. So either of the three you can find with calcaiod to be affected. Come to the breasts. My, my friends, I've prescribed, believe me, this remedy hundreds and hundreds of times for different breast pathologies. You think of cases of breast nodules, fibroadenomas, where there's a darting pain in the breast. They will tell you that whenever it's cold weather, whenever it's winter, whenever it's, I'm exposed to a draft of air, my breast become tender, it becomes swollen. Always think of calcaiod with the calcarea or with the iodine constitution. But always keep in mind, calcarea iodata is always soft, mobile tumors. So they're always movable, they're soft tumors. They can be sometimes firm, but not stony hard, because whenever you come across a stony hard tumor in a calcarea constitution, there is always calcarea fluidica. But whenever you come across soft, mobile tumors in a calcarea constitution, or a soft, firm tumor in a calcarea constitution, that's calcaiod. If again, the prerequisites should qualify. <coughs> so breast nodules, breast tumors, soft and mobile, which gets swollen up, which gets affected from cold exposure, always think of calcaiod. Another very useful remedy I can share with you, especially for soft tumors when calcaiod has failed, is lapis alba. L-A-P-I-S-A-L-B-A, -A -A. lapis alba is also a fantastic remedy for soft tumors. If you look in Borike and Lapis Alba, you'll find there's a line. Glands have a certain elasticity and pliability. So there's elastic nature, there's pliable nature in Lapis Alba, rather than the stony hardness of calcarea flu or cystus. So I repeat, stony hard tumors in a calcarea constitution, go for calc flu. Firm tumors or soft mobile tumors in a calcarea constitution, go for calcarea iod. Again, if the prerequisites of calcarea or iodine constitution corroborates with the case, with the totality. Very many times in the Metromedicas, you'll find mentioned all the glands of iodine are enlarged except the breast. So you can, be, you can find dwindling of breast in calcaiod as well. So generally you have enlarged glands in calc, in iodine. But in calcaiod, sometimes you can have dwindling of breast because of the iodine component where there is shriveling of the breast as well. But that's obviously not uh, always you'll find that. Gastric, I already discussed that with you. This is food desires. They're generally constipated. Calcarea is constipated. Iodum is constipated. 
So they're generally constipated. Again, if you see, even in the abdomen that the glands are affected, inguinal lymph nodes are affected, mesenteric lymph nodes are affected. So there's swelling of the inguinal lymph nodes, there's swelling of the mesenteric lymph nodes. Heart, as I mentioned to you, palpitation is the commonest feature of calcaiod. Least exertion, it causes them palpitation. <clears throat> Female sexual symptoms is very, very important and very relevant and prevalent in today's world. Either if you think of a case of a polycystic ovary, you're having irregular periods. You're having irregular periods due to the polycystic ovary or due to thyroid imbalance or due to adrenal imbalance. And there calcaiod can help you. You're gaining weight, so you're an obese calcarea, but you're hot. Think of calcaiod polycystic ovary is so common in today's modern day world, calcarea iod I'm sure will definitely come to your picture with the irregular periods. Also you can think of fibroids in the uterus, uterine tumors with heavy menstrual bleeding, profuse periods, again that's a tubercular component and that profuse periods is causing weakness which can be helped with calcaiod, that profuse menses is causing emaciation which can be helped with calcaiod. Also, you can find with calcaiod either with the uterine tumor or with the polycystic ovary, profuse leucorial discharge. There's a yellowish leucoria, psychotic, with, this, with the darting pain in the ovarian region, which is a feature of iodine. And you can find them to be emaciated, cachectic. But at the same time, you have the anxieties of calcarea. You have the list makers of iodine. And that combination gives you a fantastic avenue for calcaiod prescription. Extremities, do always remember this, my friends, you have a periodic aggravation in calcaiod. That's also a tubercular component. New moon, full moon aggravation, periodic aggravation in calcaiod. Coldness in the hands and feet, that's a calcadia feature, which can also be found with calcaiod. Generals, as I shared with you, takes cold very easily. Scrofulous diathesis, hemorrhagic diathesis as well because they bleed profusely per vagina. Allergic diathesis can be helped with calcaiod as well. So allergies to dust, pollen, food allergies can be helped with calcaiod as well. Hot patient, but strong craving for fresh open air. As I shared with you earlier, they crave, crave, crave for things which makes them sick. So I love fresh open air, but I know whenever I go out, it makes me sick. Glandular swelling in a scrofulous diathesis. As I shared with you, my friends, head to foot, you name a gland, calcaiod has got affinity for it. General modalities are worse from warmth. As I shared with you, calcaiod is always a hot calcarea. They're better in fresh open air. Many people have asked me previously as well, can you prescribe calcaiod in a chili patient? I will say mostly no, because the iodum heat is so much prominent in calcaiod that more often than not, nine out of 10 cases, you'll find calcarea iod to always be a hot patient. And this is, again, I'm speaking this from ancestral tips that calcarea is mostly a hot patient. I've shared this with you, the anxiety, alertness, apprehension of calcarea, the fears, insecurities on one hand. Chilly patient, they can be chilly as well because of the cal component, but mostly hot. Glands are affected. Profuse head sweats, profuse menses. List makers, their fear of forgetting due to the anxiety, due to the slowness of calcarea. I want you to please understand this feature and this gives an entire understanding of what you understood of calcaiod to sum up, to finish up. If you see on the top mixture of calc and iodum, either you can get a emaciated hot calcarea, or you can get a fair, fatty, flabby calcaiod. So both ends of the spectrum in terms of appearance. If you see the triangle on the right, catch cold easily, but desire fresh air. They have a strong, strong, strong craving for fresh open air. <clears throat> desire for cold food, I already shared that with you. Cold affects the glands. So whenever you get exposed to a draft of air, it affects your cervical glands, affects your lymph nodes. That's important. Symptoms of calcarea, the hexagon on the right, equal desire for sweet, sour, and salt. Irregular periods, constipation with a sour smelling stool. 
sour smelling sweats as well glands are affected if you see the bottom hexagon scrofulous all the nodular enlargements tumors so breast tumors uterine tumors crypts in the tonsils i shared with you that's a keynote indication of calcaiod honeycombed appearance of the tonsils large nasal polyps tonsillitis breast thyroid uterine ovarian cysts wherever you find a gland get hold of calcaiod again but you have to always remember the soft mobile tumor especially if they're palpable on the skin so whenever you come across a parotid enlargement if they're soft and mobile you can think of calcaiod if they're very stony hard with calcaria constitution you'll think of calc flu features of iodum on the left hexagon scrofulous irregular periods and profuse leukorrhea causing them the emaciation profuse periods causing the weakness hot patient palpitation from the least exertion that's important and they catch cold easily and although they catch cold easily but still i need what makes me sick i need fresh open air if you see the exact center of the hexagon scrofulous diathesis please do remember that psychotuberculosis manifestations with profuse discharge yellow if it's leukorrhea if it's nasal discharge it's yellow and if it's menstrual discharge it's profuse bleeding and that's one of the basic basic understandings of calc iod i'd like to share with you a very interesting case of calc iod i'd just like to share with you two cases in fact this is one of the cases of cystic hygroma you see the huge enlargement in the gland which you have here but you have to also understand it's a soft tumor soft mobile tumor you see whenever you're trying to palpate it cystic hygroma will come to that the dis uh, discussion you palpating it and it's soft it's mobile <clears throat> you don't have the stony hardness which you find with calcarea flu cystus phytolacca conium bryonia those are all remedies for stony hard tumors i repeat calcarea flu cystus conium phytolacca bryonia they all have stony hard enlargements but calcaiod is soft and mobile you see this is after 2 months of treatment i'll come to the totality with another case you see the gradually it started to shrunk 3 months again shrinking you see again it started to shrink all glory to calcaiod 5 months after treatment it was almost completely gone so calcaiod 200c was prescribed in a single dose with very 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 efficient results i'll come to you with another case of calcaiod where there's another case of cystic hygroma cystic hygroma is a fluid filled tumor conventional treatment unfortunately always wants to put them under the surgeon's knife and cut it but homeopathy is always got answers to cystic hygroma very many times it's a inherited condition and calcaiod has got very good aff uh, affinity for helping in those conditions if you see i mentioned here malformations of lymphatic system so you see you understand what i'm trying to share with you here scrofulous glands lymph nodes and that's the affinity for calcaiod Uh, the common location cervical region usual presentation is a painless mass at birth very many times it's um from birth so they want to undergo under the surgeon's knife but homeopathy has mostly uh, the answer in those cases i'd like to share with you another case of a cystic hygroma here this was a 3 months baby and i'll share with you the entire discussion soft swelling on the right side of the neck the affected side was slightly red but painless as the baby didn't cry on palpation so whenever you think of a gland where there is redness you can always think of belladonna in those conditions with the redness but it wasn't very painful baby wasn't crying on pressing it the baby had 
recurrent cold even from a very young age as an infant resulting in sneezing runny nose stool was about 3 to 4 times a day sour smelling stool that was on the features hot patient even you know i always try and inquire this from the mom and she mentioned that she didn't, the child didn't like to put on the coverings it was hot there was profuse head sweats <clears throat> and there was tendency to catch cold easily as well alert and active there's not much emotional symptoms to go about and the baby used to sometimes startle from the sleep so that was one of the features which the mom mentioned normal delivery no adverse vaccination reactions were there again you see calcarea iodine was prescribed why soft cystic swelling not hard not stony hard that's the differentiation that's a comparative metromedica easily catching cold resulting in sneezing runny nose recurrent cold you can find with calcarea you can find with iodine hot that was important profuse head sweats calc profuse sour smelling stool calc startling from sleep I was not sure but could be night terrors as well feature of calc calcarea iodine at 200 c was prescribed single dose we generally prescribe in c scale and there was an acute loose stool where this is a very interesting indian indian herb which you can prescribe holarian anti dysentrica which is prescribed for acute loose stools with mucus and it works wonderfully well in 6c so you can find this in your indian drug section holariana which was prescribed in 6c for the acute loose stool but again as soon as that was subsided we came back to calciod and again you see there was improvement as well and in modern day world patients their parents are very concerned about investigations so we always ask them to do a repeat investigation to see what are the changes you will see there's the investigation at the start of the treatment large cystic lesion in the lower part of the neck cons findings are consistent with cystic hygroma this was the date was 12th of september 2017 we did an ultrasound exactly a year later follow up case of cystic hygroma no obvious cystic component in the neck heterogeneity in the lower part with few foci so there was absolutely absolutely gone with calcarea iodata this was the initial swelling when the child came to us and again you see gradual there was some degree of redness as well and you also have to understand that the complementary re relationship of remedies works well as well well rona can have that redness and calcarea can have that redness as well to a certain extent because they are two complementary sister remedies and gradually over course of time like the other previous case this started to shrink as well and within a phase of one year it had completely completely subsided with calc iodata why again lymph nodes were affected glands were affected it's a hot patient head sweats like calcarea sour stool like calcarea emaciated cachectic which is a feature of iodine so whenever you come across this kind of features where you have features of calcarea features of iodine combine that and prescribe calcarea iodata with absolutely absolutely fantastic results and i'm sure you won't be disappointed <clears throat> i'm sure you'll be able to implement calciod in practice very many times i've been asked what's the potency of calciod um if you are prescribing c scale 30 c is best to start with you can go up to 200 c i have always followed the kentian octave of potencies you can go up to 1 m and 10 m and 50 m even with calcarea iodata with very fascinating results you can if you are lm prescriber lm potency is equally helpful for calciod so i won't discourage with any scale acute prescription is not recommended for calciod do always remember to prescribe in a chronic case whenever you have either calcarea or an iodine constitution and that works best in you know in with best favor favor for calciod another question i'm quite often asked what is the follow up remedy of calciod say with a case of polycystic ovary 
in a case of um, you trying tumors in a case of thyroid disorders, you have started with calcaiot. What can you follow up with? Obviously, you do a recase taking what's the best remedy which is coming up. You can always go for that. But very many times we have found after calcadia iodata, you can find features of thyroidinum coming up. You can find features of lycopodium coming up. So calc lycopodium, calc iod thyroidinum, calc iod bacillinum is also a very good chain. I repeat, calcadia iod followed by bacillinum, calcadia iod followed by thyroidinum, calcadia iod followed by lycopodium. These are very useful chains to follow with calc iod. Another last question, which I'm commonly asked and which will, and these are practical things I'm sharing with you, which you can think of in your practice. Why only I'm emphasizing on calc iod? Why not on the other iodum groups? My friends, in general, I found iodum group, iodum as a remedy is very useful for glandular disorders. But if you think of today's 21st century and the times we're living in, the fears and anxieties of calcadia are so prominent in today's world, calc iod becomes a very common prescription with the glandular affection. If you think of the insecurities humanity is living in, calcadia iod becomes an even more favorable prescription. And as I shared with you in the beginning of my discussion, that you can find the psychotubercular component where you have the greed and need for excess of calc and psychosis. At the same time, you're dissatisfied with what you get. And that psychotubercular component is most well-documented and manifested in calcadia iodata. So that's why calcadia iodata becomes a celebrated remedy for glandular disorders with the fears and insecurities, with the apprehension, anxiety, and alertness in today's unstable 21st century. Also, if you think of other iodum group remedies, I do prescribe a few other iodum group of remedies, which I like to share with you. I do prescribe Kelly iod quite often, K-A-L-I, Kelly iod very often. And I have an entire um, session of Kelly iod in my YouTube, which is a fantastic osteoarthritis remedy where you have degenerative changes of Kelly's Kelly iod is a psychosyphilitic remedy and especially useful for rheumatism of the knee joint where you have huge swelling of the knee joints, which is psychosis, excess. But at the same time, there's a lot of degenerative changes in the knee joints, syphilitic. So psychosyphilis is Kelly iod. I repeat, where you have huge swelling in the knee joints, but at the same time, there's a lot of degenerative changes in the knee joints. Especially think of patients who are contemplating knee replacement surgeries. So the thinking of knee replacement surgeries, and you can try and bring those patients back from the clutches of the surgeon with Kelly iod. So Kelly iod works really well for degenerative osteoarthritis with huge effusion and swelling in the knee joints with aggravation rest and better by movement of Kelly's. So if you think of a patient who has a lot of degenerative changes, you won't expect them to get up from the bed. They'll be all immobile. But even with those pains, Kelly, Miss Kelly Iod will always want to walk about a little bit because that's what makes the pains better. All Kelly's are worse from rest, better from movement. And that's what you'll find with Kelly Iod. So that's very, very classical for a Kelly Iod prescription. So Calcadia Iod is psychotubercular but Kelly iod is psychosyphilitic, especially for degenerative osteoarthritis with a lot of huge, huge swelling in the knee joints. That's what you'll find with Kelly iod. Another iodum component, another iodum group of remedy which I prescribe often is barita iod as well, especially when you come across a hot barita, again, with a lot of glandular disorders. My friends, for barita iod, the commonest glands which is affected is testes, testicular tumors, tonsils, adenoids. Also, you'll find affinity for prostatic enlargements in barita iod. 
Parieta iod has got affinity for those specific glands, prostate, testes, tonsils, and adenoids. But in case of Parieta iod with the tonsils and adenoid, there's more sympathetic. So you'll find Quincy, suppurative tonsillitis. That's a factor for Parieta iod. But obviously, you'll need the emotional component, the slowness, the laziness of Parieta to fulfill a picture of Parieta iod. And lastly, I also like to say, I have also prescribed sulfur iod with good results as well. My prescription, my understanding of sulfur iod is again, a lot of scrofulous glandular symptoms in a sulfur constitution, whenever sulfur isn't working. My friends, I've learned this as a clinical tip, whenever sulfur is failing with sulfur symptoms, number one, try sulfur iod, especially if glands are affected. Number two, try Morgan. M-O-R-G-A-N, Morgan Pure, bowel nozod, especially when sulfur is failing with skin disorders, with the congestion. And number three, you can always try tuberculinum when sulfur is failing. But you can always think of sulfur iod for glandular disorders. And you understand sulfur iod will be very, very hot because sulfur in general is hot, iodine is hot as well. And that combination makes sulfur iod a very, very, very hot patient. So barita iod, calcadia iod, sulfur iod are pretty useful prescriptions um, which I have prescribed. But as I shared with you, calcadia iod tops this list because of the emotional fears, anxieties, insecurities. And you have the slowness and sluggishness of calcadia, but at the same time, they're very responsible and dutiful with the glandular enlargement from head to foot, as I shared with you, in a hot, fatty, flabby calciod or an emaciated, cachectic, scrawny iodum. My friends, I'm sure I've given you a good picture to prescribe this remedy and go back to those cases where you have prescribed calcarb, calcfos, and look back, analyze those cases and I'm sure you'll find avenues to prescribe calciod. One last thing which I'd like to share with you, that very many times, you know, those of you who are practitioners, we always, myself included, we always have our favorite group of remedies or our comfort zone remedies, which we prescribe often in our practice. And whenever you are hearing in a webinar or you know, come across a new remedy, it's skeptical, you are uncertain that should I go ahead and prescribe this remedy? But I'm not giving you a new remedy as such. I'm not giving you a new proving or nothing obnoxious out of this world. I'm giving you a remedy from a group which you use very often. I'm sure every one of you joining in use calcarb, use calcarea force, use calcarea salve. And I'm sure you'll come across those cases where there's a lot of glandular calcareas, where there's a lot of hot calcareas. So, Try and go out of that comfort zone and incorporate calciod in your practice. And I'm sure wherever you have notes for calc in your books, in your computer, put a note for a hot, emaciated, glandular calcarea who is a list maker, I'll think of calciod. And that's why, that's how you'll be able to incorporate calciod in your day-to-day -day practice. Thank you very much. We'll take the questions, please. Dr. Saptashim. It is a fabulous presentation and today we refreshed our knowledge about calcare iodata with cure clinical cases and comparative meter medicum and we will take more questions. Dr. Sweta, please, would you like to uh, take some questions? Yes, uh, we have one question from Dr. Hira, sir. Uh, Calcarea carb uh, also is hot, especially in children up to five to seven years of age. How to differentiate then? Uh, my, my understanding, Calcarea carb is generally chilly. Most of the conventional metromedicals mentions that. A, B, when it, still if you think of a hot Calcarea with a lot of glandular affections and there is emaciation in the calc, um, I will think of calciod most oftenly than calcarb. And especially with children, you'll find the honeycombed appearance in the tonsils. So that's one of the characteristics of calciod, which you'll never find with calcarb. 
I, I request the audience to please write down your queries in the chat box. And thank you, Dr. Saptrishi, for uh, answering this query. And we have one more question from Dr. Shweta Verma. Uh, it's this one. Uh, a case of chronic knee joint, you told us to try uh, Kali Ayod. When other pathies have advised for knee replacement surgery, so in which potency can it be used for a lady aged uh, 55 years old? Uh, foremost, you have to understand the modality. Any, any, you know, any case of knee replacement surgery, you cannot prescribe Kali Ayod. You have to understand the modalities that they're worse from rest, better from movement A. B, Kali Ayod is very sensitive to pressure. So whenever you touch, press the knee, they you know, scream with pain. So the sensitivity, you'll find that. And C, you have to understand that there is a lot of degenerative changes. So you cannot prescribe very high. My understanding in a case of degenerative osteoarthritis, 12C, 30C, those are favorable potencies. And if you find good results with those potencies, you can always shift to LM potencies and you know, keep the patient stable because there is no, it's not an irreversible condition and palliative uh, treatment is the best option in those cases. Thank you, sir. I hope, uh, Dr. Shweta, you have uh, your queries clear now. And we have one more question from Dr. Seema Sultana. If tumor is soft with all symptoms, but patient is chilly, which medicine uh, we should think of? Again, uh, Dr. Seema, you have to assess. This is, you know, you, you cannot... Come, think of just one symptom and you know try and prescribe a remedy. If there are more iodine features coming in, like I, if I find is she's very emaciated, there is a lot of profuse leukoria, there's a lot of weakness, I may think of iodine. But as I shared with you, nine out of 10 calcired cases, patient is generally hot. But again, there can be variations. Even if they're chilly, I may think of calcired if the iodine features are quite prominent, like the profuse leukoria, like the weakness, like the emaciation, or if they're very big list makers. All right. Thank you, sir. And we have one more question uh, from Dr. D. <coughs> At what range of tumors can be cured? Sorry, what? At what range of tumors can be cured? Uh, as I shared, it's, it's mostly benign tumors, but even with malignant cases, cancerous conditions, patients have been stable with calcioid. I've prescribed if they're, you know, with the emaciation in cancer, with the cachexia, calcioid can help. But I would say it's mostly the benign conditions I shared with the polycystic ovary, thyroid nodules. These are mostly benign conditions. Uh, Dr. Priyanka Madan, she have a query. Can we prescribe calcarea iode for bones and joint affections? Uh, yes, Dr. Priyanka, there are a few features I mentioned that, you know, joint pains with calcarea group in general, they are a worse from first movement, better from continued movement. So like Rostox, very many times I've had cases of Rostox and then followed it up with calcioid as well, especially if they are hot patients, A. B, if you have a strong periodic aggravation like the new moon, full moon aggravation, and C, if they are very much better by massage, that's one of the important factors of calcarea group and calcioid has that as well. So if you have those features in combination with some calcarea iodum symptoms, you can think of definitely calcarea in a case of osteoarthritis. Uh, Dr. Shahla Sultana uh, asked for kissing uh, tonsillitis in case of children, what uh, would be the potency and doses as well? Uh, Dr. Shahla, as I mentioned, you know, potency is always upon the discretion of the prescriber, but 30C is always the potency to start with. And repetition depends upon your case. You know, I cannot give you a direct repetition advice uh, without, you know, without seeing the patient. So it always depends on what, how the progression is being made. You can always assess the dosage. But 30C is always safe to start with. Thank you so much, sir. This is all about the queries. And it was a wonderful webinar. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. Uh, Professor Regina, would you like to say something? Yes, please. Please proceed. Yes, please. Namaskarans, Dr. Banerjee, it was a wonderful webinar. I learned a lot from you. I was deeply impressed of the pictures of you shown the, the child in four, five months treatment. Uh, my question is, mm -hmm. did you change the potency of the calcarea iodatum for reaching to such awesome results? or you just kept the same throughout the 
five months treatment sir no it was it was 200 c which was prescribed um, i think twice two doses were prescribed in the span of five months and placebo in between and that had helped the case so and the patient was gradually improving so we didn't need to change the potency in both the cases um, to be honest congratulations you're a great homeopath and an awesome professor as well thank you I learned thank you. a lot from you many blessings thank you back at you dr kavita thank you so much professor krishna and thank you dr satyashi it was really very nice and it is please dr hara has a question Shall I speak? Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Banerjee, it was a great movement. You said that calcareoid is most for chronic cases, not during the acute. But when the patient comes as an acute on chronic, shall we give the remedy then? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like a kissing tonsillitis with, uh, you know, like a huge enlargement of the tonsils. I do prescribe and you know, it works acute quite well. Acute on chronic. Yeah, yeah. Though it's a chronic like state, but yes, in, a in a chronic case. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hera, and um, if anyone has more questions, they can email us at healthcareygroup@gmail.com, and they can also reach Dr. Saptashi directly. So, Dr. Saptashi has many webinars and videos which you can access. So, would you like to say anything, Dr. Banerjee? Uh, how people can reach you or uh, what you would like to say before we end this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kavita, for the wonderful opportunity. I enjoy always, you know, teaching. It's always a virtual world right now, you know, we are going through. And so, um, but still people are interacting. We are meeting, homeopaths are meeting all over the world and that's always a good opportunity. Um, I have a YouTube channel, so those who are joining in can always have a look at, I upload a video a month generally, so you can always um, see those and I give information about upcoming um, sessions and postgraduate programs, which I run on those channels. So if you follow that, I'm sure you'll be able to go through that. We have a um, website as well. We have detailed information about our courses. Uh, we have a college in United Kingdom, London, where uh, my father runs that, and I go there periodically to teach as well. And yeah. the name of the course is www.homeopathy-course.com. So I'm available through those medium. Thank you very much for the wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Benerji. And I like your videos. It's very informative and uh, easy and um, nice to learn. So we would like to take privilege to honor your gracious presence and for your precious time in sharing your knowledge today with our study group. And Dr. Sveta, would you like to provide the certificate, please? I guess Dr. Bob Lim has a question. Yay, cheers. So please kindly accept the certificate from our study group team. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Benerji. And uh, would you like to take the last question before we honor yeah, sure, our sure, second sure. speaker, please? Thank you. Go ahead, Dr. Bablim. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, that was a very, very wonderful session. And I'd like to thank the uh, lecturer, Dr. Satapri Banerji. I've seen him through the Facebook or uh, uh, what, the YouTube live, whatever. And he very explained very well, and that I would like to thank Dr. Kapita and the organizer and uh, Professor Regina and Swata Singh for organizing this uh, very, very informative webinar. There's a lot of things I learned today. And uh, thank you very much. I'd like to ask one more question. Uh, can the Cochlearia Adwata gift for uh, something like uh, the baby that's born that is not abnormal. Sorry, baby that is not abnormal. Born, they have some uh, like uh, some uh, defects. Yeah, like the cystic hygroma case which I shared that 
he was born inherit you know inherited that uh, huge swelling so that was like a hereditary condition so especially glandular conditions which are there from birth um scalcaria iodata is really really helpful in those cases so especially i'll say glandular disorders from birth what about the mental disorder also like uh, something like uh, uh, if you if you have the like the anxieties and fears but i'll say it's more on the physical plane with the glands that calcarea hard has got an affinity that's the more better sphere of action for calcaria okay thank you very much thanks dr bab and um, everyone so with your permission dr benajiam would you like to um, sh shall i honor the sec second speaker please yeah, yeah sure thank one yes <laughs> like them to please subscribe our youtube channel for all the recordings and uh, that is uh, kavita kuknur with the name of kavita kuknur i uh, please follow our uh, social media platforms uh, facebook instagram linkedin twitter to get all the future updates stay tuned with us thank you for joining thank you dr kavita and thank you so much anna for the blessing us today now we have come to new year we honor the past uh, pandemic crisis 2020 and thank universe for giving us this great opportunity to invite all the dignitaries from different parts of the world and many uh, thank you to uh, to name few dr farooq master once again i would like to thank them in this uh, new year and we wish to have many more people like um, dr farooq master dr jao khasha dr ganapati dr girish gupta dr rajmanta rajmanchanda and dr rajan shankar and dr masimo dr adil chintanawala dr kavita chandak to name few dr nancy gills dr ganapati karen allen dennis strages alistair gray dr sheetal tiwari chc president tanya kel nc nash president and lmhi president elect uh and today we have ichna president and dr saptashi banerjee and we'll see nch president at next webinar so we would like to honor all the organizations and promote homeopathy world